Welcome to Docs on Call, brought to you by Northeast OBGYN, with your host, Liz Schatzlein. Good evening, I'm Liz Schatzlein. Welcome to the program. When you think of surgery and the recovery period, what do you think of? Well, probably a lot of pain, discomfort, but that is changing slowly. We're talking about the Da Vinci robotic system, and tonight we're going to talk about how surgery is becoming less painful and recoveries much easier. I'm very happy to welcome back to the set tonight, Dr. Jeff Cly. He is an OBGYN practicing with Northeast OBGYN here in Fort Wayne. Dr. Cly, welcome back to the program. Thank you for having me. Now, we talked about the Da Vinci robotic system before, but refresh mm -hmm. our memories. Uh, it, it really is a wonder when it comes to surgery, isn't it? Uh, it's revolutionizing surgery, and it, uh, I'm so excited and, and thankful to be able to have that system here in Fort Wayne to be able to use it for the patients. It's changing the large incision surgery with a three-day hospital stay, long recovery, to an outpatient surgery, um, minimal um, incisions, minimal recovery, back to life in one to two weeks. And re regarding hysterectomies, uh, myomectomies, fibroid re removal, and pelvic prolapse surgery. Mm -hmm. So this is really something that for women is, is just wonderful. That's fantastic. And, mm -hmm. and we're trying to spread the word with programs like this to tell mm -hmm. patients, to tell their doctors that if your doctor is saying you need a big incision, mm -hmm. like a C-section, to have a hysterectomy or at one of the other surgeries, they need to ask about the Da Vinci system because it's very likely they don't have to have that large incision anymore. Now, is just about everyone uh, eligible for the Da Vinci system? Almost everyone, um, with the exception of when the uterus is so big that it comes up to or close to the belly button, because mm -hmm. then we can't put the TV camera in and see anything inside. So mm -hmm. I also encourage women not to wait too long, because some women will wait if they have those fibroid growth mm -hmm. and put off surgery for a while, but if they wait too long, then it's too big and we can't use it. Ah, so it's in your best interest to get it taken care of as soon as possible. Right? With when symptoms start mm -hmm. affecting life, exactly. Okay. Now you're talking about little TV cameras and things. Explain to us how the Da Vinci system works. Well, it's, it's a laparoscopic system, but very advanced. Just mm -hmm. like people have their gallbladder taken out with laparoscopy or the appendix mm -hmm. with those little incisions. This is a very similar system. It's about the same size, but it allows me to use a virtual reality, three-dimensional, highly mobile uh, system so that I can actually feel like my hands are inside the patient but only five millimeters big and so I'm able to do things on a microscopic level through that laparoscopic TV camera using the Da Vinci system. Okay, now you have a video that kind of shows this mm -hmm. so if people are having trouble visualizing this in their minds we can go ahead and show them right sure, now, can't and we? Sure, and I'll kind of explain what that is. Okay. We're looking at the doctor on the left there operating whatever I do with my hands on the left that system on the right does inside the patient. Mm -hmm. And I put the system there, I put the instruments there, and so I know exactly where it is, and it only moves when I move my fingers. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking through this camera, and, and you'll see here in a minute, it looks like and feels like I am within centimeters of the patient's tissues. Those wow. tips are two millimeters, as big as a pencil uh, tip, is how big those are. Uh -huh. And so we're able to do things, looking through this system here, it's 10 times magnified virtual reality, and it allows us to stop bleeding before it happens and only touch the body parts we are doing surgery on, not have to use retractors to pull on muscles, to push on other tissues. Mm -hmm. And we can actually suture um, as small as the, uh, the human heart and blood vessels in the heart. And that last suture you saw was mm -hmm. smaller than a human hair and some of the heart surgeons are using it for bypass surgery. Wow, now it seems to me, uh, since you are not exactly hands-on with the patient that there would be a risk of making a mistake, but you say no, that it's actually more accurate oh, than absolutely. traditional surgery. It, there's less complications during surgery with this system than the traditional surgery because you've got your big old hands in there on the traditional <laughs> surgery and you've got big retractors and a lot of bleeding mm -hmm. and that makes things difficult and our vision is better with this surgery. And we place everything, um, so I put the instruments where I know they're going to be and then I control them. And the machine scales my, my movements. So if I actually slip, the machine knows my hand slipped and it won't move that much. So uh -huh. it has safety mechanisms built into it. 
so the machine kind of reads what's going on yeah. huh, and corrects yeah. the mistakes before they happen. Yeah, and hopefully they won't teach it how to illuminate <laughs> me, but <laughs> right now the surgeon has to do everything and the machine just re reproduces it exactly inside the patient. Okay, and I do want to mention that Dr. Cly will be answering your questions tonight about this. The number is 483-8331. If you have questions about hysterectomies, uh, prolapse, uh, fibroids, any of these kinds of issues, please give us a call tonight. He would be more than happy to answer your sure. questions. Now you brought an instrument sure. with you to kind of demonstrate for us the, uh, the benefit for right. the Da Vinci system. There's an old joke that gynecologists they do surgery working through the muffler of the car to mm -hmm. fix the engine well and we do work through traditionally the vaginal route which mm -hmm. is a very small opening but we have to enlarge that opening and going through med school and residency I didn't realize how much damage and how much pain that that mechanism which is this called a weighted speculum was causing and this is a five pound weighted speculum mm -hmm. Whoa. I'm sorry <laughs> and imagine when we have someone asleep we actually, their, their muscles are paralyzed, so they've got five pounds pulling down on their pelvic muscles for 45 minutes to an hour in the old-fashioned vaginal surgery. Wow. Which is part of the reason women have a lot more pain with traditional surgery. We don't have to use this anymore with the Da Vinci system, so mm -hmm. you don't have all that pulling and that pain in the pelvis anymore. So when the surgery is over, then they, no problems. Most mm -hmm. patients uh, don't have a lot of pain at the site of surgery. They're mm -hmm. usually their complaint is at the uh, incision that's a centimeter long mm -hmm. up in the left or the right side. And so it's remarkable to me when they come in and they maybe a week later say, I'm having so much pain. And I'm like, where's it at? And she's like, it's on that incision right there. <laughs> the itty bitty little incision right, right there. Yeah, much better than all of this than pain. Than that or the big incision like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, we have a call rating. So Great. let's go ahead and go to the phone lines. Deborah, good evening. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hi. Hi, go ahead. We can hear you. I have polycystic ovaries. And I was wondering if this would be a better surgery than what my doctor was talking about. Um, good question. And I have I have cysts on there too. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think you're referring to um, surgery to remove the cyst on the ovaries. And polycystic ovaries are it's a condition where the ovaries repetitively make cyst, which then causes uh, pain mm -hmm. and can cause internal bleeding with the cyst. This uh, I have a lot of pain. Yeah. Right. This this Da Vinci system is excellent Hello? for. I can still hear you. This mm -hmm. Da Vinci system is excellent if you have a lot of scar tissue and adhesions around those cysts and those ovaries. I did a patient uh, last week who had severe pelvic adhesions we couldn't do with the regular laparoscopy. Mm -hmm. So we used the Da Vinci and I was able to save both of her ovaries, remove all the adhesions. She was able to go home the same day because of that increased move maneuverability that you saw on that video. Mm -hmm. So this would be a possibility depending on how many cysts you have and how many adhesions you have. Okay, all right, very good. Good news for that caller. We have another caller waiting. Tammy, good evening. Welcome to the program. Hello. Hi, I got a question. Um, uh -huh. I have been um, spotting blood. I had a hysterectomy a year ago, and I have been having severe hormone problems. Uh, and okay. It's, they probably took your ovaries out also, Tammy. And yeah. Mm -hmm. I would recommend continuing to talk with your doctor or a hormone specialist to try to get those regulated because that is very important and it, there probably was a good reason to take out the ovaries but that doesn't mean you don't need the female hormones because that's what helps you feel uh, normal function without hot flashes night sweats mm -hmm. have uh, energy and some libido so keep talking with your doctor about that there's brand name ones there's drug ones from drug companies and there's also natural bioidentical compounded hormones from several pharmacies here in town who can make those up um, and I, I don't just please don't give up because there's a lot of options and I know you can find what would make you feel normal don't have to suffer with it exactly mm -hmm. now dr. Cly you're talking about doing a hysterectomy through an incision that's about that big uh -huh. <laughs> how do you do that exactly uh, that's a great question is we have the the instruments we put in have a special abilities one of them is um, to remove the uterus through a one centimeter incision and it does that by taking little apple cores so to speak out of an apple and we we take little apple cores out of the uterus until we've got the whole uterus out through that small incision and sometimes we can actually remove the uterus through the vagina after we open the vagina mm -hmm. we let the uterus go out through the vagina if it's small enough and then we just close the vagina with sutures the other two instruments we use um, 
are able to seal blood vessels and seal nerves before they bleed and before they cause pain. Mm -hmm. And so we don't have a lot of internal things that cause pain postoperatively as well. And that's also why we don't lose much blood. Usually a teaspoon mm -hmm. or two of blood is all we lose. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another caller waiting. Natalie, good evening. Welcome to the program. You're on the air. Hi, my question is, is this a procedure that you can have done after you've had a C-section due to the scar mm -hmm. tissue? Uh, great question. It's, it's actually the best procedure if you have a lot of scar tissue because of how we can maneuver those instruments, we can get around scar tissue easier than if we have an open case. Mm -hmm. It's actually easier to do scar tissue with this than it is to open you up with a big incision and do it because we're so close to that scar tissue and we're microscopic. So we're not going to damage the other tissue around that scar tissue. So I would absolutely recommend in those cases it's perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, I would imagine also, Dr. Clyde, since you're not making a big incision in someone, your infection rates are probably very low, right? E exactly, extremely low. Mm -hmm. uh, for that reason, also because there's not much bleeding inside. Mm -hmm. And blood likes to, bacteria love blood. So the mm -hmm. more blood you have, the higher the risk of the infection. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to the phone lines. Kathy is standing by. Good evening and welcome to the program. You have a question tonight. Yes, I do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, when I was... 21 years old I'd already had a child about a year old um, and I went to my family doctor he said I had large ovary five days later the pain was so bad um, I went to ER and they ended up taking a tube and an ovary um, and then I had trouble you know conceiving and I did get endometriosis um, later I was diagnosed with lupus um, and I did have um, like two or three miscarriages, and I don't know what it was caused from, but I ended up getting endometriosis. They did a laparoscopy, burned off the, the excess whatever, and then they put, I went to a gynecologist, and he put me on medication that I didn't have a period for a year. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I got off of it a month later, I had a healthy pregnancy. I went back for my six-week checkup. Mm -hmm had a healthy pregnancy, and then four months later, I, at 29, I had to have a total hysterectomy, and um, I wondered if lupus, for one thing, does lupus cause that kind of a, as far as miscarriages and that kind of problem, and the other is, I've been on 1.25 milligrams of uh, prednisone ever since, and I'm 55 now, and I've heard that that can be dangerous as far as breast cancer. Well, I, I, we're getting a little bit off topic, but I will mm -hmm. tell you, yes, lupus can cause miscarriages and frequently causes problems with pregnancy and miscarriages, mm -hmm. and um, endometriosis can also cause difficulty getting pregnant, and is a reason many people have surgery or hysterectomies or pelvic pain. Mm -hmm. Um, but I would encourage you to continue to work with your doctor who treats the lupus, probably a rheumatologist, regarding the pre prednisone and the current medication that you're taking for that. Um, but prednisone in, in is not what causes breast cancer. I think you're thinking of the estrogen-related link with breast cancer. And talk with your gynecologist about any additional female hormones that you may or may not be on. But thank you very much. Okay, thank you. We have another caller standing by, Rita. Good evening and welcome to the program. Yes, uh, I had the uh, Da Vinci robot assisted, um, uh, laparoscopically assisted bad kiss um, on Wednesday the 27th of May. Mm -hmm. And I went home on the 29th uh, on Friday and went to a wedding on Saturday. <laughs> and I just came back from a mile walk <laughs> and um, I've had no pain, no bleeding. Uh, Dr. Clyde is an excellent surgeon, an excellent person, excellent doctor. Oh, well, that's a nice testimonial to come in. Now, is, is that result typical, Dr. Clyde? That, yeah, Rita's result is typical. God bless you, Rita. <laughs> I, I, I didn't pay you for this, and thank you <laughs> so much. I mean, that's, that's so kind of you, and I'm so happy you're doing well. But Rita is, is a prime example of how well this surgery works, and, mm -hmm. and it's why we're trying to get the word out for the patients, because Patients deserve better, and the way we can do that is by you patients talking to your doctors, and if your doctor's currently not doing the Da Vinci system, please have them say, hey, please look into this, because it, it's mm -hmm. revolutionary. 
I've been able to, fortunate enough to train about 10 docs in town mm -hmm. um, at all the hospitals, at the two hospitals mm -hmm. who have this system to use it. It's changing the landscape of Fort Wayne and how the patients do, who they do just like Rita. Mm -hmm. And I actually go over the state of Indiana and I train docs in other places in Indiana. And it's, it's really exciting to see a doctor who never thought they could do this. Mm -hmm. Once they do their first case, after they go through, through some training and, and some case work, to come stand up and say, wow, I can't believe how well this works. And then to see their patient the next day mm -hmm. blows their mind how well they're doing. Because I know when you were here last September talking about this, Dr. Cly, we, we were talking about how change is difficult. <laughs> Nobody likes change, and doctors were a little reluctant to right. embrace this. But obviously now, here we are nine, ten mm -hmm. months later, things are changing. Absolutely, and the, mm -hmm. the patients have driven it, and the doctors have, have jumped in there and done it, and they found out the same things Rita found out, that it's, it's a whole different ball game, because you go home quickly, you're back to normal quickly, mm -hmm. and you're back to life so much faster. How long does it take to train a doctor in this, Dr. Klein? It doesn't take that long. It's more the really? time off. It's because most of us have done gynecology-wise, have done laparoscopic surgery. So mm -hmm. it's actually just going from an old car with stick shift to the Cadillac with automatic drive. It's better tools, better instruments. So you really have to take a couple days off. Mm -hmm. uh, Indianapolis is, is one of the training sites. Um, there's some other training sites in, in Ohio. You got to go down there for a day or two and you sit through lectures again, you sit through class, you practice with, without live objects, and then you do practice with in an animal lab to make mm -hmm. sure that you can do this on real live people. And then you do some observation cases with other doctors, and then you do your first case with a, a, a trainer. I usually go and help people with their first case or two. Mm -hmm. And then after a few cases, you're doing them on your own, and, and we make sure that that doctor's ready before mm -hmm. we we step aside. So this is just kind of the next step up for them then? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, very good. We have another caller standing by. Ariel, good evening and welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. I had a hysterectomy about a year and a half ago and ever since then we have found that um, sexual relations have not been as well because of a large amount of dryness mm. and I'm wondering what we can do about about that and also I have people telling me that if we get a clitoral piercing that that's going to help with the stimulation and the moisture and I want to know if that's true. Well Errol, actually that's a very good question and the, the clitoral ring has been used by some people to increase the blood flow to that area which is supposed to, supposedly to increase sexual arousal. But it doesn't really help increase, or I'm sorry, decrease pain during intercourse. Um, it just would increase the blood flow. So I'd encourage you to continue to talk with your doctor. Uh, definitely the lubrication for dryness is very important to make sure that the friction doesn't start causing pain. And also check with your doctor to make sure that there's, there's nothing inside your bladder or some irritation in the bladder that's causing pain. Um, and I think you'll be able to get to the bottom of, of the problem where you'll be able to enjoy intercourse again with your partner. Are complications uh, after the Da Vinci system fewer like this than with normal surgeries? Yeah, they're fewer in the sense of because we're not damaging as much tissue. So mm -hmm. we're not seeing the same level of infections. We're not seeing the same rate of complications internally with internal organ damage. Right. Um, and then we're not definitely not seeing the hospital complications because the longer you stay in the hospital, the mm -hmm. more likely you're going to catch a bad bacteria because hospitals are where a lot of bad infections are. So mm -hmm. it's being able to get that patient out quickly helps a lot. Going back home. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another caller standing by. Kathy, good evening and welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. I was wondering if this um, will lift the, the bladder. Uh, yes, it, yes, it will. The, mm -hmm. the uh, procedure you're talking about is the um, prolapse portion of the da Vinci surgery. And what it does is it lifts the vagina underneath the bladder, which is usually called a cystocele, uh, which is part of the pelvic prolapse. And so it does work very well. And one of the, the nice things is, is the procedure we do with this used to have to be done with a large incision, but now we're able to use these small incisions. So we've taken the tried and true gold standard prolapse procedure and now made it minimally invasive go home same day or next day so you have the best of the long-term success mm -hmm. and the quick recovery rate as well 
great. Do you have? Do you uh, do you put them under for anesthesia? Uh, I do not, but uh, the the anesthesiologist does. Yes, you have to be asleep because we do use um, some air inside the abdomen to kind of open up the abdomen, uh -huh. and th because of that, that presses on your diaphragm. So the anesthesiologist does have to put you to sleep so that the machine can help breathe to counteract that pressure. Okay, and can you have a hysterectomy in a bladder at the same time? Oh, that's a good question. You can have a hysterectomy in a bladder at the same time with this procedure. With the, the only difference is we have to leave the cervix, which is where the blood flow to the top of the bladder and vagina area is. So we, we do something called a supracervical hysterectomy, take out the uterus, mm -hmm. the fibroids, and maybe the ovaries, depending on the age, and then attach the prolapse mesh to the cervix of the vagina and lift it back inside where it used to be. Okay, so you can have it all done at once then. Uh, it uh, takes a little bit longer, mm -hmm. a, a few hours in, instead of one and a half, uh, but the patient's still waking up feeling the same. Mm -hmm. How common is prolapse? Very common. Really? Extremely common. Is, is, it's one of the biggest uh, and most common complaints we see. Mm -hmm. Most women hide it and kind of embarrassed about it until yeah, it's People don't want to talk about it, that's for right, sure. Right. Yeah. And um, the more children you have, the bigger the children, the more likely that there's some damage to the pelvic tissues as they came out. Mm -hmm. So it's less common with women who have C-sections. Not a reason, though, just to do a C-section, but it's, it's something that we see, and I'd encourage women to talk to their doctor, but especially get some physical therapy muscle exercises done before you do surgery, because sometimes that'll fix it. Ah, so mm -hmm. you can... Cut it off at the source. You Cut don't even have to do it. Okay. Right. All right. We have another caller standing by. Janelle, good evening and welcome Hello. to the program. Hi. Hello. Hi. Go Hello. ahead. My question is, um, I recently had an annual exam done and um, it was found that I have pelvic mass and abdominal pain. Um, so I was told that my fibroids may be growing and was referred to your office. I'm a person that does not currently have health insurance. What are my options um, if I want to come to your office and have the procedure done? Mm. Sure. Um, Parkview has some programs to try to help in those situations. And unfortunately, we're seeing more and more people without health insurance right. because of the economy, because of the problems in health care. So I, I, number one, talk with the hospital. And then number two, um, there's a place called Matthew 25 Neighborhood Health Center who will see patients on a, uh, they'll adjust the, the fee based on the income. And many times what we get is we get a referral from them and we're able to then take that referral and see you and then we somehow write that, that cost off or the hospital does. It, there might be some, some actual official federal grants in that, but that's one way I've told patients who have really been able to, uh, unable to afford care to go through that. It's an extra step, but it can help in the end get you back to see our office and defray that cost so that we can treat you th with what you need to have treated. So don't give up. Don't yeah, give look, up. Right. Look into it. There are ways to get it done. Right. Okay. Right. We have another caller standing by. Mary, good evening and welcome to the program. Uh, thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Mine is similar to the caller two, year, two callers ago. Mm -hmm. I have a grade three bladder prolapse. Mm -hmm. And my doctor would like to do a total vaginal hysterectomy, mm -hmm. uterus, ovaries, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, would, could that be done with this method? It, it, it could be done with this method. And the, it could also be that the total vaginal could be the right route to go also. Because with the grade three, there's a lot of prolapse. And there are several docs in town who do a lot of prolapse and could treat that by doing it vaginally and then... Uh, Putting, doing an anterior and posterior repair or putting the tissue back where it goes with sutures, permanent sutures, and anchoring that to some of your ligaments inside your pelvis. So that is one way to do it. And then the Da Vinci system is another way. And it kind of depends on the situation, your age, how active you are, what job you do, do you lift a lot, which way you should end up going in the end. Mm -hmm. um, and, but ask your doctor about the, the procedure. It's called the Da Vinci and it's called a sacral colpopexy. That sounds kind of fancy, but <laughs> say Da Vinci sacral something something. And they'll understand what we're talking about. <laughs> okay, look into it. All yeah. right, we have another caller, Melanie. Good evening. Welcome to the program. You're on the air. Hi, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just have a question. Um, 
uh, being recently diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, mm -hmm. um, what young women need to look out, probably number one thing to look out for, and also um, with wanting to start a family in the near future, what could be possible the benefits for the cons, I guess, of taking medication like aldosterone and other things like that? Well, uh, mm -hmm. the polycystic syndrome is, is a complex syndrome, and, and what it involves is uh, some hormones that aren't regulating the ovaries as well as they should, and the ovaries aren't producing eggs uh, ideally. There's a lot of things involved in that, so I, I would say it's, it's almost too much to talk about in just one question, but I would check with your doctor. Uh, diet's a big part of this, medication's a big part of this sometimes some hormonal manipulation to try to get those ovaries in the right state ready to become pregnant and sometimes it, it, it there are some elements of ovulation induction drugs that might be necessary in order to get the ovaries to ovulate so stay with your doctor continue to talk to him about what's the best treatment route okay if someone wanted to have this procedure done, if, if they have a surgery looming and they think they might be a candidate for the mm -hmm. Da Vinci system, what should they do? Sure, I, and great question. I see that all the time. Mm -hmm. I usually have patients, they usually come in to me for a second opinion, mm -hmm. and I usually say, find out if there's a doctor, if it's in my group or it's in one of the other groups who does the Da Vinci robotic surgery. And keep your current surgery as it's currently mm -hmm. scheduled, because that can take a long time to get scheduled. Yeah. But get an appointment with that, that doctor or call the office, and we can look over the case and say, hey, yeah, this is, the Da Vinci would be a great option for you, and maybe your doctor's been actually investigating doing it, or maybe they, we can do that with your doctor. Okay, so they, they can be their own advocate. Yes. Okay, yes. Dr. Jeff Clyde, thank you so much for coming and joining us, talking thank about this again. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Hope you'll be here again next week. Dr. Kathleen McCabe will be talking about degenerative, degenerative eye diseases. That's next week on Docs on Call. Until then, I'm Liz Schatzlein. Good night.